No, I don't think so. Wash I don't think wife. a mudroom just means wash it. <laughs> <laughs> just, but, just, I'll just bang you in it. Bosh, you know. Bosh. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our channel. Hello. This is Alice. <laughs> and this is Kai. And today we're going to be taking a, a look at um, Lawrence from Lost in the Pond, and the video is Six American Things I Can No Longer Live Without. Ooh. Interesting. Interesting. So we know uh, Six Lawrence. Six American Things I Can No Longer Live Without. Has He's been, been living, living in the US for a while now. Um, so this must be things that we don't have over here. And now he can't live without them. I think it's food. Or it actually, it could, be, it could be literally could anything. Be anything. Can... Shall we have a look? Yeah, maybe sports one of them, you know. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And one of those memos pertains to things and stuff. Specifically, things and stuff that after living in the United States for nearly 16 years, I can no longer live yeah. without. When I first moved here in 2008, I had all these British people saying, Ooh, don't you become all Americanized? And I hope those people aren't watching because, as you can see, there's no going back. <laughs> I have become Americanized to the extent that I am now, in fact, an American citizen. And because of that, nice. and since I've lived here for so long, you really do start to pick up an attachment to certain things. And people who've been subscribed to this channel for a long time are probably expecting me to say air conditioning right off the bat because I've done that a thousand times. And it's because I've done it a thousand times that I'm not going to do it in this video. But just take it as read that. AC ordinarily is one of the things I can't live without, even though I did in Britain okay. for 26 years. And if you aren't yet subscribed to this channel, do that now! In the meantime, here are American things that I can no longer live without... Drive-thrus. I feel like this one is just really embarrassing because when I lived in England, we knew about drive through restaurants in America and thought that looks a bit too extravagant. What's wrong with catching a bus and then walking the extra half a mile to get to the place and ordering your food there? At least then you justify the calories you're about to eat at, say, McDonald's. And I held on to... That's a weird one though, isn't it? And um, It's almost like maybe it's because he hasn't been to the UK in quite some time. Maybe. I don't know if he travels back and forth frequently, maybe to see family or maybe he doesn't. But, I mean, drive through is very common here now, aren't they? Yeah. You can drive through everything. Drive through, you know, all your fast foods, your McDonald's, your KFC. I wonder um, if he... Costa, Starbucks. Yeah. Too. Like, everything is drive through now. Um, Mostly fast foody kind yeah, of places. Not, not, not really restaurant, restaurants. But then... I think I've heard somewhere, I've seen another video that there's drive through um ATMs where you take cash out. Well, no, we saw that in um, a Texas did, video, didn't we? Did we? And I yeah. think they even had a drive through like supermarket. <laughs> you just yes. go in because so... I know it was with Eva Zubek we watched because she went to get some sparkling water, if you remember. Oh. And they had no idea what she was I doing. don't know exactly, but uh. yeah, maybe that's kind of what he means. It's not just for for fast food yeah. that you get to um, drive throughs. Okay. To that feeling we'll for quite a while, but then I uh, turned 40 and realised that <laughs> oh my I God. like my comforts, that I'm lazy, and that my dog Arthur really likes drive throughs because it often comes with the promise of a poppuccino. And since I left Britain, <laughs> I have heard that drive throughs have popped up in Britain. And if you are British okay. and you are watching this, have you experienced drive throughs where you live? And if so, do they drive in the opposite direction around the building to here? Number two, mixer taps. You might have seen my YouTube short from last week where I spoke about this phenomenon, which is less of a phenomenon and more just the norm in most places in the world, but not in Britain. And if you don't know the reasons for that, go and watch the short in question. The point is, in the house that I grew up in Britain and just most houses in Britain, the bathrooms and the kitchens have sinks with separate hot and cold taps. And for 26 years, I had to wash my hands like this. Get some soap, mmm, nice and foamy. Turn on the hot tap while well, getting foam on it. Run your hands under that. That's bloody hot. Turn on the cold tap to cool them down. Ah, oh, that's nice. That's really nice. That's it's actually getting a bit too cold now. And they're done. And I never once thought to myself, there must be an easier way to do this. I did turn the taps off too. I'm not wasting water. And then I moved to... Okay, that, go. Again, that's, again, something that is quite old school and it's not yes. necessarily something you encounter. In no, I think, to be honest, now... Um, <clears throat> Mixer taps or faucets are, are they are the norm over here now. Yeah. Um, it obviously shows actually he hasn't been over in quite some time. Yeah, that's because true. Because obviously the drive throughs first, yeah. now the now the taps. I mean, I do remember though, you know, when I was growing up when I was obviously quite young, 
um, that mixer taps weren't as common mm. as Lawrence said. Yeah. And I do remember, you know, especially on the bath, you got hot, you got cold, and you know, trying to get that awkward balance, and you're often and one running. hand to there, one hand there, and, you and yeah, but the hot would be coming out and be like scalding, especially if you, I don't know, you're in the bath already, you've run it kind of a bit, a bit mixed. You get in, and you want to add a bit more water, and then the hot's coming out, and it's just like lava, you know, <laughs> like you're just burning your feet and. Or, you know, in, <clears throat> when you're washing your hands, as he said, it's so inconvenient because it's like, oh, too hot, I think too cold, too hot, too cold. When you're washing your hands, that is mm. a problem because if they're both running in the bath or to have a bath, mm. then it's not really... Well, I remember like with my nan. So when she used to have like a bath um, with two different, with two individual taps, mm. that there was like a, I remember them having like a rubber hose that connected onto both taps and it ind ind indirectly kind of made a mixer tap. Oh, okay. It was like a rubber thing that it's like a Y. It sort of come down like that, then in and then up into like a little shower. Okay. Um, so there was a way around it, obviously. But mm. yeah, once again, I think we are up with the times. Thankfully, we're, we're <laughs> catching up with you guys. Um, so yeah, not not really something that he would it's live a thing without. Anymore. It's, yeah, yeah, I think we're catching up. You wouldn't there. have to, to live America. And I noticed there that we just yeah. one faucet in the sinks in the house that I lived in initially. I just thought, well, maybe this is a quirk of this particular house and didn't really think too much of it. But I did like the fact that you could choose the temperature that came out of the tap. It didn't have to be scalding hot. It didn't have to be freezing cold. It could be somewhere in between. That said, I don't think in the middle <laughs> is the perfect temperature. That's too lukewarm. I'm the sort of person who gets his steak medium well. And so when I've had a steak and my hands are all green, I like my temperature to be medium well. I might have thought about this too much. Fans. One of the biggest American things that I can't live without and one that I've not really spoken about publicly is vans. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, Lawrence, you and Tara have a Prius. That's hardly a van, is it? Well, calm down, you keyboard warrior. Is it warrior? Warrior. Because I'm not referring to the vehicle type. I'm referring to vans shoes. And ah. as you can see, these are a little worn and dog eaten, and they're in the process they're of being everywhere. replaced. They the are point really is, nice. these are my favourite shoe brand. And you might be thinking, Lawrence, I didn't know you were a skater boy, because as we know, Avril Lavigne is a massive fan of this channel. And I'm not a skater boy, <laughs> although granted, I did once have an addiction to Tony Hawk's 3. The point is, I am somebody with long legs, rubbish knees, and I don't like shoelaces. Now, I should add that Vans has lace up shoes too, but those, they are point. Now, this is not sponsored by Vans. If it was, I'd probably show much nicer pairs of shoes. But I've just become a fan, you know, a Van fan or a <laughs> van. And they're comfortable. I walk in these every day with Arthur when he's not treating them like a meal. And they've been everywhere with me, from the beaches of Lake Michigan to the mountainsides of West Virginia. And they've got the scars and the odour. We can the tell, period. yes. Americans, did you ever think that you'd hear a British person say this? I can't live without American English. Now for me, more than most people, that's true because firstly, it forms part of the basis of my job comparing and contrasting our two countries' varieties of English. But it also plays a big part in my everyday life. I mean, firstly, I'm married to an American-born citizen. Secondly, and I've done videos about the precise Americanisms in question, I myself have picked some up. Many, in fact. You know, I come from a country where we are forever fearful of the Americanization of English within Britain. The thing is that I would say to that is that Britain lost that fight a long time ago. For instance, any British person, and this is 90% of us who've ever used the word hangover are upset that we have one but at this point are probably completely unaware that the word hangover originated in American English more than a century ago. Now I wonder if British people at the time had the same reservations over the word hangover as they do quite a lot of American English but then it got me thinking we don't take any issue with most American English terms that make it over to Britain whether it's military derived words like radar or musical genres like jazz and rock and roll or a word as simple as hello American English and British English have long influenced each other and will continue to do so long after I'm dead. And on that happy note, it's time to get up off the sofa. Mud room? And that's because what I want to talk that? about one particular room in my house. I think it's when you first enter... Like a porch? Yeah, first enter the okay. house, you leave your dirty shoes there, your, dirt, your wet umbrellas... Okay, I, your I get it. Actually, yes, it, it is useful. Actually. Yes, I, I'll give you that because you know if you walk straight into a lounge, for example, and you got all muddy shoes, it's a, a porch. porch. Unless it's more fancy. Well, let's, let's have a look and see. House and that 
is the mudroom. And even though you find mudrooms in other countries like Canada and even to some extent Britain, it just feels like more American houses have them. And you might be thinking, what is a mudroom? Well, a mudroom, as I've pointed out in previous videos, is a sort of entryway that just allows you to drag mud in there before you enter the main part of the house. I mean, that might not be its official purpose, but that's what I use it for. And especially since I got a dog. You know, he likes to run around in this yard. Sometimes he drags me too. And so when we come back from doing that, I make sure we hang out in here first so that I don't have to bother getting a towel and drying his feet off. But I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you the main reason that I've fallen in love with this mudroom is it's a very convenient place just to store rubbish. I don't mean moldy <laughs> rubbish like food or stuff like that, but just sort of empty boxes that I don't have room in the recycling bin for yet. I've just realised that everything you on love this list this is something that I could live without if I wasn't lazy. But the fact of the matter is, I am. Which brings us on to the final... It seems like quite a large room, though, for a porch. Because, you yeah. know, for us, a porch would literally be almost like, you know, a metre squared maximum. You know, like... Well, ours even. is quite small, no, but, but I guess you could have it. Yeah, but bigger. even then, they're not that big. Like, most yeah. people's porches aren't very big. Maybe enough to just have a little shoe stand in to put some shoes in. You know, yeah, to hang your clothes really, and... Um, but that, that's a little bit shoes. extra, that one. Like, mm. You know, you it's could have your room, whole guess, Amazon collection in there, couldn't you? Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll do like a little place where you don't have to have to answer the door. Like Amazon can just slide things into your house, into your mudroom. Yeah. yeah. That'd be it. That'd be kind of handy, Deliveries go there and everything. <laughs> That'd be good. Just like a sort of a one-way door. Where yeah. Once you're in, you can't come out. So anyone that wants to kind of break in is stuck in. Can't. Yeah. Well, we just walk home and we've got some captured prisoner inside there. <laughs> like, whoops. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they came in for the Amazon parcel and they, they never did. left. Yeah, actually, that's not a thing here. Like, um, I did hear that parcels do get nicked in the US quite a lot. That doesn't really, really what, happen here. I guess generally, though, over here, parcels are either signed for or left with a neighbour. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Your neighbours would just your... burn their house down. It's fine. You <laughs> for know. a parcel, you burn your <laughs> yeah, house. Oh, I'll Savage. I'll ask him for here. the parcel back first, though. <laughs> you know? No, but like even people walking down the street, you see loads of dash, like um, ring cam videos mm. of parcels getting nicked. Even delivery drivers are sometimes dodgy. I don't know. I think that's all sort of certain areas you know yeah obviously i'm not saying the whole of us has an epidemic of <laughs> leaking parcels but i'm saying it happens a lot more you, you can't sometimes can't even trust your neighbor to put, to take it for you because they might not give it back they i don't know they didn't get it. i don't know if they have a similar sort of postal stuff to us where like things are signed for or it takes sort of responsibility to an extent you know i mean if you know it's gone to your neighbor yeah, and you go over there and they say, no, I didn't get it. It's in your own hands at that point, isn't it? You know? Sorry, no, it wasn't us. This is not the picture of my house or of me. What are if, you going to do? If that happened to me, I would start getting really petty, I'll be honest. <laughs> what are you going to do, though? Well, you don't have to do anything, but you yeah. can just be really inconvenient, you know, like just dig up one of their plants and move it. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, just silly stuff. <laughs> well, that's how, you know, like, it then escalates to burning the house down. For example, we'll you start, went straight there. We'll though. start with the plants and we'll work away <laughs> out, you know. <laughs> oh dear, should we just carry on? Let's carry on. Your final entry. Oh, I'm married. Over I the last what? two weeks, it's become very Did you get that? No. Like, what on earth was that? Is the name of the style of chair, I guess. Ah, okay. What? Adirondack. Adirondack? I feel like that's not how you say it. Adirondack. Actors. No idea. Let's, no idea. Let's listen to how Never he says it. Neither. Over the last no, two that. weeks, it's become very apparent right. to me that I couldn't make this video without including a piece of furniture that I spoke about a few weeks ago in a video all about American furniture, and that is Adirondack chairs. It's been a good few weeks. I've used them very often while sitting outside with Arthur. Now, granted, it is the summer, so it sort of makes sense that I am out here, but I can imagine that I'll probably be using these in the height of winter, just not in a t-shirt, but a winter jacket. Because like vans, they are comfortable. And you might be thinking, aren't 
aren't they just like a deck chair? And firstly, no, because you don't have to fold them up and put them away. And secondly, on deck chairs, your ass doesn't fall back because there's not that diagonal slope. Whereas with these, there is. Mm. And again, appeals oh. to my laziness. And then of course, the arms that I spoke about in that video are majestic. I mean, you could you can fit your phone on it for one. And number two, you could probably play an entire board game. I've got this idea that my wife or friends will bring along their other Adirondack chair, put it here so that they're sitting there and we'll just put a board here, play checkers. The one thing that I didn't mention in that <laughs> nice. video is that they're really easy to clean. And I know that because they're constantly getting covered in bird sh that is one of the downsides <laughs> of having it under a magnolia tree, which is so massive, I didn't really have any choice. Final so place. that's my list, or at least a partial list, because like I said, there's hundreds of other things that I could have included. And if this video does well, my producers say, then we'll do a part two. If it tanks, then we'll just push that part two under the rug. If you did like this video and you were interested in what I was saying about my Adirondack chair, why not watch this video for furniture styles that I only encountered after moving to the United States. Until the next mm -hmm. video, goodbye. 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 Hello, I'm Lana. Oh, oh, sorry. What did you do? I was going to get rid of it and then you just started <laughs> again. So a couple of ones, well, the first couple. Yes. Dry throughs. What was the and the one? faucets. And the taps. faucets. They're already here. We've got yeah. them, so they're not really, he doesn't need to live without them. But anymore. I guess the point of his video is not necessarily a comparison. He's no. just saying, I've gotten used to these American things, mm. and they are American things oh, yeah. to an extent. And they've made their way over the here. I don't know if the faucet are the mixer taps. I think times have changed, and they've just, the yeah, they've just come. But I guess he knows better. So he's just saying, mm. yeah, I can't live without these anymore. So it's not like, oh, UK, do you don't have no, them. No, no, no. It's just, uh, but we got a bit defensive with the first two, I guess. We might have got a bit defensive. <laughs> um, the mudroom is an interesting one. Yeah. I think it's just a glorified porch, though, you know, realistically. Well, like, a, well, like if... an upgraded sort of, in terms of size, at least. It's, I, it's just a bigger I don't porch. know, though. For me, it's like, you know, being the stingy person I am, I'm thinking, well, that's a really big room. If I take a metre off of that and now put it into my toilet. hallway yeah, or my toilet, bar. you know what I mean? So... Like, do I really need that big area? Is that common in your, your houses, guys? Like, do you have a big mudroom, a porch, where you put your shoes, hang your coats, or <clears> is there, does it have a different purpose? Maybe Lawrence I didn't think explain too well. I've also seen in other houses, maybe more posh houses, a mudroom, or there's an area where you have, like, a, an area where you wash your dog before you get into the house. So maybe mudrooms also include this special little low sort of... Uh, tub where you can wash your dog maybe this is just for dog owners then no i don't think so wash i don't think wife. a mudroom just means wash your dog <laughs> <laughs> just, but, just, i'll just bung you in it bosh you know bosh. but i have seen um <laughs> well if the dog drags me in the mud i guess i would um i would benefit from that uh, i'll ensure i'm recording so. it if we ever get a dog and it drags you in the mud <laughs> um okay what else was there there were six. That was three of them. We got the other on chairs. That's four. The other two. What did we? What am I missing? What have I forgot? Uh, it was the language as well. Oh, um, the Americanisms. Yes, yeah. but I think that's just part of. I think that the language how is language just a crossover, evolves isn't and it? how countries, you mm. know, they use things for convenience. Like I know in Romania we mm. use some American words like weekend. Weekend is obviously not a Romanian word. Yeah, um, I but everyone American uses. Word, Sorry? I didn't know it was an American word. Well, in English, sort of. Everyone uses weekend. I mean, I, I say American words, for sure. I, I use hangover. I say dude a lot. Um, dude a lot, dude. yeah. I guess cool probably start, originated from America as well, Maybe. wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Hey, cool. But I think there's a lot of <laughs> other countries that are not, that are not English-speaking countries mm. that use a lot of English words, like shopping. Oh, like sort of blending it I into know, your into everyday the language speech. language that they speak, like shopping and weekend very easily come to mind. That Is that also because in, if I remember when you told me before, like in Romania, sometime, or in Romanian even, but some saying like an expression or a whatever you're talking about, it's much easier just to say one word in English rather than 10 words in Romanian, for example. Yeah, so if there is no <clears> word, <throat> not <throat> one word for that thing, yeah. it's much easier to say it in English because English already has a word for it. And I know like when you speak to your friend that um, is also Romanian, I often, you know, they'll, they'll be talking away because it's kind of funny, actually, because whenever I appear, it, the language just instantly shifts to English. Like It's like I've just appeared and then the language has just changed. But, well, um, it's a... It's a 
But it's a polite thing, yeah, no, isn't it? Yeah, it's a polite thing. We don't want to speak Romanian in front of someone that doesn't understand. No, of course, but it's it's the transition is just weird because I'll, I'll hear them like instantly, or not instantly. I'll hear them talking like Romanian, then I'll just be coming down the stairs and instantly it's like shifted to yeah. English. It's really weird. Um, yeah, from an outsider's perspective. Um, okay, that was the language. final one. What was the final one? I don't know. He was not part of it, was it? That was just a general thing. No, he. That oh, was... he was in his vans, was it? Ah, oh, the vans. Okay, the shoes. Yeah. yeah okay. I mean, we have vans now. I think that's more of a recent thing, like the plimp Zoe type shoes, like vans yeah. and Converse and things like that. Yeah, I mean, they weren't as common. Yeah. You know, I, when I was in college, I think I got my first ever Converse yeah. pair of shoes. And yeah, going back maybe 10, 15 years now. But they weren't that common and frequently worn. I think mm -hmm. in America, they're way more, they're worn way more often than they are like. Yeah, here. and again, I think it's not about, oh, this is not in the mm. UK. It's just like, they're an American brand. I think that's what it is. Yeah. I think that's what it is. So obviously, we do. And he loves the style. Yes. I, I really like the style as well. To be yeah, we love vans as well over mm. here and Converse as well. Mm -hmm. Even our daughter has a pair of vans and, she and does, yes. Converse as well. So really cute. Little yeah. Things. I mean, anything like childish or babyish, mm. it, it just, yeah, it just makes you melt, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, I How think was that? That was that, wasn't it? I that think... took us a bit longer to recount yeah. everything that we saw. I think Alzheimer's is kind of kicking in a bit. You know, <laughs> Already? Oh, I don't my know. God. It's, it's all going downhill. <laughs> yeah. um, well, if you made it this far, thanks for enduring, because I know we talked a lot. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps us. Um, but other than that, see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.